Ladies and gentlemen, why, you, you know something? I was thinking about this when I, we were talking before the, we started recording this. How good Ronnie Bennett looks today. I mean, you, you're, you look in the peak of good health. I, well, you know, my new favorite line is that I made up myself even. Mm-hmm. It's if I didn't know I had cancer, I wouldn't know I have cancer. Yeah. You know, the thing that's worse is COPD. But it's getting easier to handle because I've got such a great bunch of people, nurses in rehab, that are teaching me how to deal with it. And, um, and I feel good. I mean, you I, look, I mean, you're right. Uh, you know, you don't know it, and we wouldn't know it because you look terrific. You just yeah. look terrific. So I mean, uh, what the hell? You know, um, <clears throat> live a good life and leave a good-looking corpse or something like that. I don't know what the that saying was, is. Who was the? There was a movie star who died really, really young mm-hmm. that said that line in a movie. Yeah. And I can't remember who it was. It was someone. It was would be our age now, I think. Yeah, yeah. But he died very young. Um, Happy New Year. Happy New Year I, to you too. Know, this, this recording is a, this on New Year's Day. We were so, recording yeah. this New Year's Day, but it's going to be on a couple of days from now. So you know, I, yeah. because I have to talk about a friend of mine who died this week. My one of my closest personal friends, uh, Jack Garfine, who was. Uh, I'm sorry. He, you talked I, about I've him. I've talked him. about him, and I love the man. I, and we were with him a few hours before he passed. So. Uh, you know, it, 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 somehow, you know, what's, what's strange is I knew this guy when he was older. I only met him when he was older, but he was vital, you know. And then as the years, a couple of years have gone by, I've seen him decline in health and decline in health. And finally, the other night, there I am with him with tubes in his mouth and not conscious at all. He's kind of uh, a la-la land with all the drugs that are in him. And You know, it's just not the person that you knew, you know. But I leaned down to him and I told him how much I loved him and kissed him on the forehead and and, and said my goodbyes. And I was very happy to be able to do that, you know. We don't often get to do that except with our closest relatives. Um, You know, I was looking at one of those... You know, the endless end of year compilations on television mm-hmm. for all different kinds of things. Yeah. And of course, one of them, the one that had come up on screen for me that right then was um, all the famous people, musicians yeah, and writers, we, yeah. sports people, and all that stuff who died during the year. The damn thing wouldn't end, Alex. It wouldn't end. Are you t- are you t- are you, are you, you're not talking. You're not talking. Let me finish. Let yeah. me finish. I got teary after a while i mean when they do certain kind of people like the sports people i don't know anything about sports i can't yeah. possibly care but most of the rest i at least heard of and many of them are entertainers of different kinds that i have watched all my life they're my contemporaries mm-hmm. and i'm wondering because i've never been here before and i've never heard anybody speak of it before or at least only glibly not how i'm trying to approach it is that when the touchstones of your generation go away, Mm -hmm. when they disappear now in large numbers at our age, it's very hard to know your place Mm -hmm. or if you even belong in the world anymore. Uh, You know? Yeah. Um, there's There's a singer, a young singer, I think her name is Lizzo. Mm hmm And... I didn't hear about her till recently. Apparently, she's had some big hit or did mm-hmm. something that got her a lot of publicity. That's not my generation. You know, mm-hmm. my generation is the Beatles and all that were that age, you know, in the age contemporary to the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and um, and so on, whether they were actors or musicians or whatever. And I got quite weepy about how my life is kind of, the periphery of my life is thinning out. The mm-hmm. touchstones aren't there anymore. Do you know? Do you have? Uh, no, I know. I, I know. I know what you're saying because as I get older, I find that uh, oh, people are dying on me. I mean, people who were, as you say, touchstones. And I go, well, you know, that's the bad news. The good news is I'm 80. You oh, know? see, that's that's not what I'm talking yeah. about. No, no, I'm not but, talking no, but about. But I know what you're. No, but I do know I'm what you're talking, talking about. 
the atmosphere I live in. Mm -hmm. And as these people, my contemporaries that I've followed all my life, keep falling away, there are fewer and fewer and fewer of them left, I feel like I don't exactly belong in the world anymore. I certainly don't understand the sensibility of our culture anymore because I'm just not part of it. Do you want a scary thought? If you and I, you and I together went to your, I don't know, 30th high school reunion or something like that. You know, 40th. 40th. <laughs> if you were to hold a high school reunion a day, how many people would be there? I don't know. I have no idea. Not very many. You know, I mean, because as time passes, people that, you know, that. Yeah, and I, that doesn't mean much to me because I don't have any memory of. High school. I mean, when I got out of high school, I just left. I never. No, no, I agree with you on that part of it. You know, but what I'm saying um, is, but is I that, don't have any memory of them, yeah. so they don't mean anything. Well, to what me. I'm just saying is the the question of how many of those people would be alive right now, and the answer is maybe a quarter. Yeah, and this, and see that doesn't resonate with me because I don't. I couldn't give you a name of a person I went to high school with. I have no memory. Well, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for my high school reunion when there's nobody to show up. So that's, you know. Um, but, but, you know, but see, the high, my point is though that the high school people we knew then in high school aren't part of our lives from then on. So they don't, I don't care. They don't give me a sense of the world I live in in the way that all the people I've worked with and, you know, been friends with or enemies with or whatever, and all of the peripheral people that we see in movies and television and rock concerts and, you know, whatever it is that we do that entertain ourselves, we have, there are stars among them. And they become kind of the periphery of our culture. Yeah. And they're not, lots and lots of them aren't there anymore. By the way, I want to say to the audience, Ronnie is probably a little out of sync today. I'm in sync, so that means that it's Skype that's the problem, and I can't do anything about it. So just listen to her words. That's what's important. Um, yeah, you know, um, I just, you know, I, I just have come to the, the conclusion. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever been at much at peace with myself as I have been in the last couple of months, you know, going through this whole cancer scare thing and so on. Uh, that I, I came to realize, I mean, I said to, to myself, why do I have prostate cancer? And the answer is the number one contributing factor is I'm 80 years old because men of my age, 70% of them will have prostate cancer. So have you gotten from a why me to why not me yet? No, I've gotten, I've gotten actually to a, I understand why me. You know, I mean, I don't have what you have there people have no, it's to, not about it's not yeah, about wait, wait, let, let me finish people have to know there are different i every now and then when i say well i've got prostate cancer people go oh i'm so sorry for you and i go wait a minute hold on a second i don't have pancreatic cancer i don't have lung cancer i've got prostate cancer which is very common and very very treatable okay uh but uh I don't know. It just made me reassess things because I've had to go through this process of fear and so on and so forth. And finally, I've said, well, thank God. Now I know what it is and we're going to do something about it. Now, is it, does that sound like me? <laughs> you know, the hypochondriac, you know, I. Well, it's not it's not, you know, geez, did you ever get rid of all those cysts? I remember that every day of our lives together, you came over and you pulled up your shirt and back and you said, would you feel these things and tell me if they've grown? Alex, I, just, I have no, I, I, I went along with it because it was easier than arguing with you about and that, it. And how old was I when I was doing that? I was like in my 30s? Maybe yes. 20s? Yeah. Uh, no, I had. A, I still have it. I still have that bump in the in the back. I think yeah, it's still there. I'm just feeling it now. Yeah. And I had a doctor I once tell I me. I really. I'm. I'm no long, I don't have to listen to that anymore. I'm not married to you anymore. Yeah. Um. So I don't have. By to By the do way, that. does this look it's inflamed to you? <laughs> does this look inflamed to you? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, no. I. I'm. I'm. It's funny. I'm less of a hypochondriac now over this thing. 
than I was in all the things that I ever worried about. I was well, worried. All the stuff you worried about was make believe. This I, is real. I know this is real, and somehow I can deal with real. You know, this yeah. very st- silly. But I, you know, I I just say to everybody, don't give me your sympathies or stuff when I say I've got prostate cancer. I'm just telling you, I've got prostate cancer. So what's going you know, what's going to happen? I'm going to. But gonna wait do- a minute. There's something funny I have to tell you. Another friend yeah. agreed with me is that once you've been diagnosed with a, you know, the word cancer is a pretty dire yeah, word, right. whatever kind you're talking about. Right. The, just the word alone scares out all of us, you know. Yeah. And what happened after my pancreatic cancer is everywhere I turned, people were talking about pancreatic cancer. Every television drama or movie writer mm-hmm. who needed a dire plot point he chooses pancreatic cancer suddenly in my life. <laughs> oh, well, you know, he's got pancreatic cancer, the, whatever the line is in the movie or the TV show. Yeah. And then you re- every time you turn around, this is supposed to be, and it is, it's not supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Pancreatic is a kind of cancer that very few people get compared to breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer. And <laughs> But it doesn't matter. Every time you turn around, once you have it, somebody gets diagnosed with it. Right, right. And just this week, there was Representative John Lewis. Really? You know, one, hmm? a, a John Lewis, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, who was diagnosed with it this week. I mean, you start to think, that, and just last week, something I was watching on TV is, sure enough, pancreatic cancer came up in the dialogue. <laughs> it just won't stop. Uh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, uh, I mean, that's, uh, that, that, that's, uh, you know, I, it, it, I, I don't, uh, I'm not getting that because I, I, I don't have what you have. And I, oh, well, you I, just give yourself a little more time. It'll start happening. Oh, uh, well, uh, I, you know, I mean, I certainly, it, uh, you know, I saw an ad for cancer the other day, I think that, that, uh, oh, you you hit the mute button when those come on. Uh, that yeah, well, the, there's one about this woman who's sitting there and she's looking at her somebody who's talking to her and say, Marge or whatever her name was, you've got cancer. And I'm going, wow, that. And I try to turn it off. <laughs> Does that commercial you can't get, turn it off? Huh? You can. Did you say you can or cannot turn I, it I off? I turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. I just I hit the mute button. I have got the fastest mute button finger in the world these days. I don't want to hear these commercials about how this place or that place. They never say they can cure cancer, but they kind of apply, imply it. I mean, it's really kind of an insidious, ugly thing because the implication always is we cure cancer here. Well, you don't cure every kind of cancer. No, not at all. And not every time. So, you know. Yeah. So I want to show you something. Yeah. <clears throat> One of the things that I do to preserve my sanity is I don't sleep well. I haven't slept well for decades. Mm-hmm. And then once the cancer came along, I thought if I'm going to get through this with some amount of you know, uh, clarity or something, I need to sleep more than three or four hours a night. Well, I live in Oregon where... Marijuana is legal, and I had done all of the -the over-the-counter things and all that stuff, and nothing would keep me asleep past four hours. So I started trying what has to be called cannabis now. That's the way you're supposed to say it, apparently, here, instead of pot, weed, you know, all of that. And there are these dispensaries that are wonderful stores, and, of course, I can't be smoking um, so I use edibles and they come in the cutest ways. And I thought I would show you because I have several, one of the things, both a medical doctor told me and one of the bud masters at one of the dispensaries separately told me mm-hmm. is that any, any drug that you take that helps you sleep, I think this applies to other drugs too, but I'm not sure will over time become less effective. Mm-hmm. And, they're, each of them told me the same thing. Get different kinds and just use different ones on different days, and then your body won't get used to the same one over and over again. Right. So I hit the dispensary. I've always had a couple around. So I hit the dispensary, and I, I thought I would show you some of these because they're kind of cute. This is my tincture. Your tincture? Tincture. 
and I put it under my tongue. It mm-hmm. comes with a like an eyedropper. And I use that. I've used that for a long time, and it's effective. But it had started to wear off, which is why I got into trying these other things. This one, this little round thing, mm-hmm. these are little hard candies with a lot of THC in them. Mm-hmm. You can get them with only CBD too. Do you know the difference? What is the difference? THC gets you high. CBD doesn't. Oh, okay. So if you've got something um, that's mostly CBD, you won't get high. Okay. But I tried that to sleep because I don't care. I'm going to sleep. Why do I care if I get high or not? Except it doesn't work to keep me asleep, but THC does. Okay. So you see this, this little package here? Yeah. yeah. It comes with this little blue thing and a little blue gummy in there. Yeah. And I can cut them up. And there are about six servings in there. Mm-hmm. And that's another. This one is flavored. Oh, this is huckleberry. Do you get high from that, or is that the CBD? If I stay awake long enough, but I'm usually asleep. <laughs> uh, it puts me to sleep quite effectively. Um, this is chocolate, little cho- little teeny chocolate candies. I tried my first one two nights ago. It works beautifully. Yeah. This is really good. The brand name is Mule. Is Mule? Why is and it called Mule? I don't. It's the name of the company. I don't know why they named their company anything. Anyway, it's raspberry. Mm-hmm. I've used it all up, and it was really worked, so I'm going to get more of that. And look at this one. This one, and can you see the number on this that I'm holding it 45. up? 45. 45. Most of them tell you that they won't take effect. Edibles don't take effect for about two hours mm-hmm. before they kick in. Mm-hmm. Um, this one says 45 minutes. I tried it. I don't know. I fell asleep, so I don't know if it works or not um, in that respect. <laughs> And then there's this pretty little box, and this is grape cannabis fruit chews, and it's got a little thing in here. Wow. So, and, and this barely scratches the surface. You've there. gone, sh- you've gone shopping, haven't you? I went shopping. Yes. How much does that stuff cost, by the way, where you are? Oh, you know, edibles like this one. I think this was twelve dollars. Really? Another was ten. Another was eight. Really. Yeah, there's another, though, that this is expensive. Uh, this size bottle, the tincture, mm. I think is $24, $27. And there's a larger bottle about this tall, and it's way more, like $50, maybe $60. Um, yeah. But you, know, you don't have to spend that kind of money to get what you're going for. So. Yeah, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, yeah, I'm jealous, you know. We sit here in New York. Uh, I thought that you, you had recently we legalized ha- We it. have medical, but it's you have to go through so many hoops and stuff to get it that most people find it impossible to get it. I have so. to tell you a funny story about that. When I first moved here to Oregon, only medical marijuana was legal. And mm. there were dispensaries, but you had to have a card that you got right. from a doctor. Right, right. And um, on late night television, when they run lots of local commercials, yeah, there was a doctor when I, but he would come and tell you about your anxiety, your problems with anxiety, and this and that. Mm-hmm. Come see him, and he could help you. I mean, this was without quite saying it a blatant thing. Is I'll give you a marijuana card, yeah. <laughs> and he looked. I didn't know it, of course, at the time, but he looked a whole lot like Trump's weird doctor. You remember him? <laughs> yes. Yeah. He looked a whole lot like him. <laughs> and then a couple of years later, they legalize, and they do, and it seems to work this way in every state. First, it's only medical marijuana, and then in a couple of years, because I suppose because doctors just keep hanging, hanging, handing out the the cards, they just switch it over to recreational or whatever you want. Use it for whatever. Oh, and you know what else? What? There are two different dispensaries I go to regularly. Mm-hmm. Both of them have told me that over 50% of their customers are old people, older than 65, that use it for arthritis, that use it like I do for sleeping, and those kinds of remedies, you know, everyday remedies that we all use. And most, you would, I mean, my thought was, oh, there's nothing going to be nothing but kids in these places, but it's old people like you and me. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it, it's it's still wonderful that you can get it, and I'm jealous that I can't, okay? Well, and it works in terms of sleep. 
it works better than anything else I ever tried. I can actually stay asleep for seven hours straight. Wow. That's terrific. That's yeah. terrific. Well, you know, I mean, it's therapeutic and it's fine and it's good. Uh, we also like to use it recreationally. Some friends from another state yes. sent us uh, a uh, one of these uh, vapes. Okay, with the with the pot. It's a it's a major company that is is known for the fact that the cartridges do have pot in them and not vitamin E and crap like that. And I got to tell you, I don't like that vaping. It just it it's like raspberry flavored or something. And I why go, are you doing it? Have you not read about what's happening from well, that? Well, I'm not dead yet, and I only do like one every now and then, so it's not. Yeah, well, happen. that's what happened. Like the third time, there was one kid who talked about it. The third time. Wow! wow. Don't do that. Don't oh, well. do. That. Oh, I'm not anymore. I'm back to doing the joints because I love the smell of pot. <laughs> you know. Oh, you know. Wait until it's legal there. It will be because. When you walk into a dispensary <laughs> here, it's just wow. It just, it's, and they've got these wonderful little jars, and they're all labeled. You might not remember this. Yeah. But I used to label our marijuana that I kept it in little jars. Yeah. yeah. That we had. So some was good for music, and some was good for sleep, and some was good for sex, and so on. Yeah. And I had them all. I don't remember if I was, we were still married, or that was after we broke up. And uh, so, you, but you know, it, it's some, they'll be there. The dispensaries will be there in the not too distant future. And it's it still surprises me every time I open the door to go to the dispensary, and this aroma hits me in the face. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's uh, the new business. Yes. You know. uh, it, you know, and here, it's like I don't know about the other states. I guess it is true in every state. It's only a cash business. I think about uh, well, that. Well, there's a reason why it's a cash business, and that's because the government won't allow them to bank the money. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, but they but have... They th all of the money stuck in suitcases and people's attics or something. <laughs> For the people who own these places. That, I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, a lot of There's something, 20-odd states that have at least medical marijuana, and they should deal with that business the same way any business is dealt with. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is, is that what happened was in, in Colorado, they couldn't find banks that would hold their money. So they had safes and safes and safes of money, yes. and they had it's to hire true. people to guard them. Well, no, it, that changed because banks couldn't take their money, but uh, these credit unions could. So the money was then deposited into credit unions. And that took a great load off of them of having cash and cash and cash and cash, you know. <clears throat> Still, it shouldn't have to be that way. No, of course it shouldn't have to be that way. And it is a therapeutic drug, as you as evidenced by your experience with it. And uh, it, I think it's time we grew up, you know. I remember, I, I love to tell the story about the time years ago at my apartment in, uh, down in the, uh, 14th Street, or which was our apartment at one point. Uh, I'm sitting, I'm lying there on the on the rug uh, with a, in a big beanbag chair, and next to me is my old friend P.J. O'Rourke. And P.J. looks at me as we're passing this joint back and forth and says, you know, by the time we're older, this is going to be legal. Well, it sure, sure took a hell of a fucking long time <laughs> right. to Dude. get to that point. You know, it wasn't like <laughs> tomorrow or 10 years from now, I'm still here in New York City, 80 years old, and they have yet to totally legalize marijuana. You know, of all of our problems in the world, even when you're talking about people's drug problems and vaping problems and that sort of thing, way down on the list, I mean, in the very, very, very bottom of the list should be marijuana. We've got big problems. This should not be something that... The government's making a big deal about. Well, I mean, the, it, but it's the government that's preventing it. It's the yes, government that's, that's swooping saying. in and saying, well, it's illegal federally. Well, fuck you. It's illegal federally. Whatever happened to states' rights? You know? Yeah. You know, you, you yell about states' rights you all the be time. You about states' rights. Well, no, but you yell all the time about states' rights, and then when you have a states' rights issue like the legalization of marijuana, you get all uppity. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't understand it. Makes no sense to me. You know. Nor me. Do you have any predictions for the new year? 
Well, we're running out of time here, but let's go over because fuck it, I got all the time in the world. I got two hours a night. Um, uh, you're, uh, and, and by the way, for the audience, yes, she is out of sync. I've been trying to get her in sync, but I, it, 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 I would have to do a whole thing with it, and I haven't got time for that. So just listen to her words and close your eyes if it's bothering you. Any predictions for the next year? Yeah, uh, Trump's going to get reelected. And your reasons? Uh, my reasons are, who are the Democrats got? I mean, who are they putting up that is going to be able to take on this son of a bitch and gain at the same time uh, that magic you need to have people get just absolutely enthralled by you? You know? I mean, well, there's the way- nobody running on the Democratic side that would get that kind of response. I mean, but o- Obama who, did. Who you know. would you choose then, having nothing to do with who's running at the moment? <sighs> I don't know. Robert Redford. I don't know. You know, I, 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 I don't think. I think the problem is, is that. I think it's America that's gotten stupid. Okay, I, I, I don't blame Trump, on Trump. I blame Trump on America. These are the people who put him into power, and these are the people who probably are going to keep him in power. Because they believe the, 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 you know, the memes and, the, and the, the whole thing about, oh, the, you know, life is better for people and blah, 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 blah. Well, it's not better for me. I don't know if it's better for you. You know, it's better for Trump's friends. But, I mean, I just, I don't know. I just think it, it, it's going to take, you know, it isn't Bernie Sanders. Uh, he's too old and too, he's too... How can I put it? He's too socialistic for, for this country. I, I like what he says. I agree with what he says, but he could never win against Trump. And neither could Elizabeth Warren. He would just take her to the woodshed. And Biden, he's already uh, neutralized. So who's left? Buttigieg? Outside bet that he could win because he, he's got a whole bunch of things in his favor. Like, there's very little Trump could go after, and he's not going to go after him because he's gay, because that would be completely uncalled for. I mean, even for Trump. So what does he go after him for? His, his, his military record? I don't think so. You know, a whole bunch. He's even, you know, inexperienced? Well, at least he's a mayor. Trump wasn't anything. He was the host of a goddamn reality show. You know, so what, it, what could he go after Buttigieg on? Plus, you look at this big, fat fuck standing next to what is a pretty attractive, uh, young, vibrant guy, and you say to yourself, well, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe, you know? So that's, that's the problem, you know, so. Uh, and if it weren't any one of the people who are running? Well, who else? I mean, it's not going to be Bloomberg. Bloomberg's a loss. I don't know, someone who's not running that you would like to see run. Do you have somebody? No, I'm asking you. Well, no, I don't have anybody. I Do you realize we have three, count them, one, two, three, well, at least two and a half billionaires running for president? Yep, 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 we sure do. Um, I mean, we don't know. I don't know that Trump is a billionaire. Nobody does, but um, um, three of them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stiers. Uh, I, I would have thought that Trump had proved now Two things, well, at least one, that it, it, what, what everybody else thinking person knew before is that running a business is not the same thing as running a government. Right. And they have nothing to do much with each other. We've already proved that one so-called businessman can't run the country. So why would we think any other billionaire who own, know only about private business could run a country? Well, I agree with you. I agree with you totally. I mean, that, uh, that, uh, and that goes without saying. Plus, they do have their own personal interests at, at heart, and you don't know when that's going to come into play. So, you know, I mean... You I, know what I think is odd, too? These guys are all old. They're all in their 70s. Even, I mean, they've made more money than each individual, <laughs> practically, more money than God. Mm-hmm. When do you stop? The ambition. When do you back off a little? 
Um, I mean, they do. Do rich people get drugs that make give them energy that I don't have? <laughs> well, I mean, there are people that do try to give away their money. Uh, Gates uh, has tried to give away his money, and as much as he gives away, he keeps making it all back. So at the end of the year, he's he's richer than he was before the year began. The same is true of uh, the Sage of Omaha. Who said that? Who Who are you talking about? Uh, Gates, Bill Gates. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, okay, Bill Gates, and you've got uh, what's a Mike, uh, the uh, the Sage of Omaha, uh, the really rich guy. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, he uh, is uh, uh, giving away a lot of his money, and as much money as he gives away at the end of the year, he made more money. We should and, all have these problems, jeez. But I, but I mean, the, uh, these are people who are willing to give back. They can only give back so much before it, you know it, it, there's a penalty for giving away all that money. Uh, so they give it away in parcels. What, what do you mean penalty? Well, you, because if you give away more than 15% of your income, uh, you're then having to pay taxes on that. You get a, a tax benefit. But they can afford it. So what difference does it make? All I'm saying is these guys, guys like Gates are giving back. Uh, and uh, I don't see where Bloomberg has particularly. And I don't see where don't, where Styers has particularly, except to his own campaign. And uh, so, uh, you know, the fact is, yes, you're right. Uh, these guys have so much money, they should give most of it away because how much are they going to leave to their children, you know? I mean, that's, uh, uh, you know. No, I, I don't know anything. I'm not so... I, I, I don't have any opinion on them giving it away. I'm just interested that... Three out of the how many candidates are left now? Mm -hmm. um, seven or eight. Mm -hmm. Three, which means nearly half, mm -hmm. are billionaires. That just doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So what's your prediction for this year? I don't have any. Well, then you ask me, and then you don't have one to come up with? Well, I was playing host. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Who's the host here? I'm the host, okay? I, I well, it says the Alex and Ronnie show, and I put your name first only because I was doing Alphabet. Oh, a I see. Well, you know, I mean, the thing is that uh, I don't like being called a host, first of all, because uh, um, when I was studying uh, biology in school, uh, a infection was always called the host. So I always looked upon the word host as an infection, yeah. Well, what and your preference is? My preference is uh, star. No, my preference is, um, 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 uh, I guess it's host. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to go along with that on some level. So hey, we come up with something better. Hey, listen, we've run out of time and you've run out of sync. So uh, I don't know what this is with the sink. And I kept trying to change the sink on you and it didn't. It didn't help all that much, but... Uh, oh, is it off bad? I'll look later and see how badly it is. Bad well, it's about, about about a second. And oh. uh, how much... Is, uh, well, uh, let me... When we're off, I'm going to just test this to see if I can change it to a speed that works, okay? But anyway, I, you know, think the world of you, and, uh, you know, the way you look, uh, you're going to leave, leave a good-looking corpse. There's no question <laughs> about that. Happy New Year, my dear. Happy New Year to you, my dear. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett to be found at um, uh, as time goes ta time goes by dot net. Time goes by dot net. Forget it. Don't put the as in there. Time goes by dot net and read her musings. Read the people who write on her page. It's really a terrific, terrific blog. Oh, and she's been nice. she's been doing it since the fifth century. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you. See you in a couple of weeks.